We welcome now to the show Dr. Carl Harrop. He's professor and chair of cell biology and neuroscience at Rutgers University. Here now to discuss an Alzheimer's vaccine. This is your area of specialty. Good to have you here. Nice to be here. Vaccines you usually think are for viruses like the chickenpox. Alzheimer's isn't a virus. How does it work? Well, it's a good question. Um, the idea behind a vaccine is you're trying to instruct or teach our own immune systems to fight off an invader. Usually it's a bacteria or a virus. Um, but the idea that scientists had was that if they could teach the immune system of uh, a middle-aged person to recognize the uh, Alzheimer's deposits in the brain as an invader, that we could probably use the, our own immune systems to fight Alzheimer's or at least to fight these deposits. So you're saying give it to or the thought is all middle-aged people, people in their 50s, so, as a prevention? Yeah, so you've hit on one of the huge problems here because we don't actually know that the vaccine is going to work. Scientists never know a vaccine is going to work until you test it. And the problem with Alzheimer's is right now we have no really truly reliable biomarkers to let us know apart from the loss of memory and, and other symptoms whether you have the disease. So how are we going to know if our vaccine is working? It's, you have to prove a negative, which is you're not getting worse. So it's very hard, and the problem that the field faces is that the trials that you'd need to mount to, to get at this question um, would be enormous and involve a huge number of people, and that means they'd be very, very expensive. So we're struck, stuck there. Is there a genetic predisposition for this disease, or is it just a natural part of aging in some people, or maybe you just don't know? It's more common with age. In fact, your risk goes up uh, dramatically with age. Um, there are rare forms of the disease that are genetically inherited. So you inherit an, an Alzheimer's disease gene from your parent. And we're discovering new genes uh, that affect your risk. So if you have the genes, it's, it's not a sentence to get Alzheimer's, but it ups your risk. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. Luckily, fortunately, she only lived a year. Sadly, many people struggle for 10 years. Fact of the matter was, though, we couldn't diagnose until after she was passed and had an autopsy. What's the difference between dementia, Alzheimer's, and how do we know? Um, a very good question, and one the field is debating uh, quite seriously right now. Um, the, the, the Historically, Alzheimer's has been defined uh, by these plaques and tangles that I mentioned in the brain, that, that the very plaque that the, uh, the uh, vaccine would hopefully be. And are you off. able to detect this prior to, to one passing? Yes. So one of the advances that's been made recently okay. is you can now uh, use PET imaging to detect these plaques in the brain. But we're still trying to learn whether th these PET imaged plaques are able to truly predict the disease. It's very much a work in progress. How far away is the vaccine? What's the status of trials? And is there anything that people can do with their diet to avoid this plaque? I've been hearing a lot about that. Um, the vaccine, are there some major trials that are going to be uncovered uh, within, I would say, the next few months? Um, and, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously, even if it's hugely successful, it will be time before um, it's widely available, as I say, trying to prove that it's going to work and people who can actually use the vaccine is a problem. Um, in terms of what people can do now, actually uh, the, the recommendations vary, but I would say exercise, both mental and physical, is the best. And just as far as your diet goes, anything your mom told you is healthy, it's probably a good idea. What have the trials looked like so far in mice? Are their brain cells regenerating? Is it sort of like flowers for Algernon that we're seeing? Tell me. <laughs> so we can, we can certainly cure mice, uh, but the problem <laughs> is that that's not going to help uh, health policy in the United States very much. Um, the mice that we cure have been actually engineered, so in some ways we're cheating because we're fixing something that we broke. Um, but we have to start there because uh, this is a disease of aging, a disease that takes many years to develop, and research just needs to pre uh, proceed more quickly. You're saying it's promising. You also have a population that is aging. More people are living longer, for better or worse, so more and more people 
may be having to face this, uh, children having to watch their parents go through this. That's absolutely correct. It's a huge uh, burden on not just the health system, but on the caregivers uh, who are, you know, family members and, 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 uh, and friends and relatives of the individuals. Um, and right now, um, it's an area where there's been less attention. Uh, there's plenty of attention, but less than on the, on, the, on, the, on the biology of the disease. If you live long enough, eventually, will you get some form of Alzheimer's or dementia? Tough question. Um, the odds, as far as we know, the longer you live, your risk continues to go up, which uh, some people dodge the bullet their entire life can live to be 100 years old and, and be sharp as a tack. Uh, some people, uh, not so lucky, but it's all a question of odds. And right now, we actually can't give you a definitive answer. That's a difficult disease, and they call it the long goodbye, and it's uh, certainly something my family's had experience with. We thank you for your insight and analysis. My pleasure. Okay.